return to what's happening now, located in Plainfield, New Jersey. And now, the town talker, Reverend Zachariah Jackson. Well, you know, it's good coming to you. I'm the Reverend Zachariah A. Jackson from the Church of What's Happening Now, Town Talker Talk Show. I tell you, we got about 12 to 13 more days for the election. What is it, 12 days? Around that. Uh, around, around that, around yes, that yes. And the 4th of November, the first Tuesday, will be, you know, the day. Mm -hmm. uh, Obama, I believe, is on his way out to the state of Hawaii to be with his grandmama. I think he's taking the kids and everything to see her. She's not doing too well, so you know, prayers, prayers, are with him. prayers are with him and everything, you know, and, and stuff. Their family, and their family. At this time, at, at this time, out on, on the Pacific Ocean, I pray that the Pacific Ocean take care of them. Yes. Pray that they have travel and mercy. Yes, 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 and bring them all back and everything. But I, I, I tell you, I know how it is when your mama or grandmother, in, in his case, it's his uh, grandmother, but she acted like his mom. Mother, you know what I mean? She and, brought him and, up. Yeah, yeah, she brought him up, and so that's mm -hmm. a special love. And I tell you, too, you know, when I remember when my mother was sick and, and I would march in the hospital, big old Russian hat, big long coat, I could just come from one of those countries on vacation, and I'd come in there and everything, and boy, you know, even though she was on her way out, that made her feel good. You, you could feel the energy as you're coming, you know. Mm -hmm. You come marching on in and everything, you know. And I, of course, I would try to act like I could pay all of her bills and everything. And she would let me pay them, but she made sure that, that right before she went home to her maker that she got to hospital to release her that day and uh, for me to take her to the bank. And I said, well, my, well, you know, I'll take care of that another time. And I, I never forget taking me to the bank and making sure that uh, she gave me all the money. I had paid her bills for eight months. And, you know, that was a, a, a good, brave thing, a, a heroic thing for me to be able to do that. You know, I had to argue with my rockhead little sister. She uh, was saying that, you know, she could handle the bills. And at that time, you know, I said, well, now, you know, uh, I said, okay, now, then go ahead. Then go ahead and take it. I'm not one to argue, you know what I mean? <laughs> the next thing you know, before you know it and everything, you know, uh, I look up and uh, my mother told her, you know, and with the pipe down on my, what they call that, trach out of me thing, that thing? Yeah, she totally right. had hand the bills over to him and I was able at that time, you know, I mean, t times have changed, you know, church was happening now, now the church was happening now in the radio show. And, um, uh, hand the bills over, and I was marched to the bank, and I mean, marched to the post office to buy what do you call them uh, money orders. And I tell you, that was a a, 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 a a champion thing for me to do. And, and I tell you, it was it was something. But you know, of course, everything got to come to the end, and she had to go on home. But you know, everything was okay. But today, we have um, a. a group here today, of course, my sidekick and friend, Reverend Branch, is here, and we have Brenda Gilbert. She was at the uh, Women's League. The Women Voters. The Women's Voters League. Women Le the League of Women Voters. Last night at Plainfield Library, and I was able to capture uh, 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 the event on video, and um, it was good, and she represented real well. And she's going to tell us about absolute how you write in, because she's a write-in candidate, and exactly how you do that. And, and you know, and I, and I thought that you know, it come to my mind. I said, you know, I've never written in. I've never written in. And I, I mean, but before we go to go to him, let me introduce another friend of mine, a friend that that I went to jail with. You know, <laughs> I went to jail with this friend here on the corner of. Uh, Park and and, and 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 Front right. Street, East Front Street, East Front, the, the Plain West Front, Five. the Pre Plainfield Five, went four, Plainfield Plain four. four, went to jail for marching. You understand against me? The against the what, what was it? Against, police brutality. Police brutality and against the war and crime in the city. You know, we we mix it all up, and we went to jail together and everything. And um, Steve B. Uh, uh, no, Stuart B. Rosenberg, and we went to jail together. And uh, you know we. We, we, we had our time together. He's here today to talk about the war. The war that's draining our economy. So today we're going to go to Brenda first and, and, and explain to us about this writing thing. What, what is this? Uh, how, do you, how do you go about doing this? Thank you, Reverend Zach, for, first of all, inviting me this afternoon. It's and on. thank you for all your encouraging comments and um, prayers on last night. 
And we thank God because we believe that we were victorious in that debate on last night. We, we, we um, were able to perhaps convince and change some people's minds on last night with things that were done and said. I think everybody represented well. Um, you asked me to come on today to talk about the right and vote. Yes. Really. Because that's how I'm running. I'm running as a right and candidate. And a lot of people do not know how to do a right and vote. When you go into the polling place. The polling booth. The polling booth. Okay. Okay. You will go in and you will vote for Obama, if that is your case, or McCain, whomever your choice is at that time. You then come down the column to the office that you want to then write in your personal choice. You hit the button. There's going to be a green X that's going to flash. Okay. Then you go across and you come down. You will find a maroon write-in pad at the bottom. It's waist level. You then type in who you're voting for in the write-in vote. Then and only then, after you've done that, do you hit the red cast the vote button. No, 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 let me interject this right here, uh, uh, Brittany. Um, now, you, so in other words, you type the name in. Yes. So you have to type the name in right. Yes. Well, if you type it in wrong, will it take it? From my understanding, if they can, if they can at least um, decipher what you meant. Okay. Okay, then they, they will count it. But let me even go a little further than that. Because of our news stations lately and they're predicting these long lines at the polls yes if you think that you're going to have a problem doing this right and vote let me suggest to you let me urge you <coughs> to do the absentee ballot now a lot of people do not understand what the absentee ballot is about the absentee ballot is just like if you went to the polls and vote, it will count the same way. The only difference is, is that there will be a hard copy to follow up your vote. You can get an absentee ballot just because. It used to be that you had to have a reason why you couldn't get to the polls. But you now can receive an absentee ballot by filling out an application asking for that ballot. They then, you mail it or you take it to your, your city clerk and you can do this up until the 28th of October. They will then send you out a ballot and it has to be filled out and put back in the seal envelope and sent in. It will count just as if you went to the polls. Now, because I know all of this is new to a lot of you, I'm going to be setting up some times, at least two times next week. And we will get back to you with those times and places. That if you feel more comfortable in requesting an absentee ballot and filling it out, then I will assist you or have people to assist you in filling out an absentee ballot. Because this is a very important election. And we don't have time to be fooling around and making mistakes. Sure. So it is important that these things are done and done right. If you need these things prior to the time that I set up to do this, listen very closely. This is my number. My home number is area code 908-754-5500. One five seven five seven eight two one five. Call that number. If no one is there to answer the phone, leave your name and number. We will get back to you as soon as possible and get an application to you. It is very, very important that we do this thing and do it right. You don't want to get to the polls and the line be so long sure. till the time for the polls to close, close, and you haven't had an opportunity to vote. So one of the things that we're trying to do is to ensure that everybody's right is respected and that you get an opportunity to vote. If, in fact, that you 
don't remember my number or if you're driving and can't write it down, then may I say to you this, and I hope I do this with the station's approval. Call and leave your name and number. They can pass it to me and I'll get to you. Okay. That would be, uh, Is that fair enough? Yeah, that shouldn't be a problem. Let's, let's go to uh, Stuart Rosenberg. He, um, of course, he'd be out there marching in front of the... Uh, Recruiting center, I guess, yeah. uh, all by itself a lot of times, you know, because on Saturday a lot of us are working and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, um, where are we at now? What, 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 what are we doing? Well, this uh, this Saturday at uh, 11 p.m. to 12:30. Uh, excuse me, 11 a.m. to 12:30 p.m. 11 in the morning, we'll be out in front of the uh, Armed Forces Recruiting Center in Plainfield. That's on uh, East Front Street. It's 116. Right near the corner of Park Avenue, and 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 POP, uh, uh, come a little closer. To the oh, sorry. PO, POP has uh, Plainfield branch has, has been out there for what the last four years now. Yeah, actually, just in excess of four years, we've been picketing at that same location uh, at the last Saturday of every month for about fifty months now. Yeah. Uh, the war has been going on even even longer than that. The right, war has right. been going on for five and a half years yeah. in Iraq. And in Afghanistan, it's it's seven plus years. Actually, wow. this month is the seventh year uh, in the Afghanistan war, and uh, the expense and the and the blood that's been shed is just it's just mind boggling, astronomical. She's reading my mind over here. It's taking us and, uh, and now with the economy uh, going down the drain faster than uh, you could. Imagine the words of and Superman, the, faster than the speeding bullet, right? Yeah, faster than the speeding bullet, and uh, and uh, that we're spending uh, ten billion a, a month in in Iraq and a couple billion a month in Afghanistan. Yes, yes. And uh, this country can't afford a war. This country afford. cannot afford a war. This country needs to reorient its its uh, its priorities to human needs, not yes. not to, mm -hmm. for the war profiteers. You know, we've got to peace has got to come because we can't get justice while there's a war. Mm. Justice is not going to be possible. You know, major type change is not going to be possible with these wars. And uh, I think this election uh, coming up, um, you know, hopefully we'll have uh, uh, President Obama next year. Yes. And he's someone who at least will listen to people like us. Sure, sure. Uh, I'm not positive he's going to end these wars. Right away. But I know one yeah. thing, he's not going to ignore the voice of the people. It, it's costing America so much money to stay over there and, you know, um, I, I, I still don't have the whole economic gist of what's going on. Uh, after the United States pull out of the war, uh, pull out, uh, do, uh, do they owe America money or is that how this go down? I mean, do they actually owe like what they call a war booty to America or what? Or is it? You mean, you mean Iraq? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, do yeah. Iraq owe America? Well, if anything, America owes Iraq yeah. for the damage that's been done, or the I kind of doubt that the United States is going to be paying reparations. I mean, well, I mean, but will it? You, you, you know, what I'm talking about. Will they have to pay some money for this thing, or is it going to be some kind of economic tariff? to pay America back for all the money that's been spent over there, what, you know. I, listen, I, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing what you're saying, but I'm also hearing what you're saying as well. And like you said, will, will, will Iraq owe America or will America owe Iraq? You remember when they went into the palaces and things, they found lots mm -hmm. of things down there, gold and money and those mm -hmm. kinds of things, mm -hmm. um, expensive china and statues and these kinds of things. And those things have never been accounted for since they were found. Yeah, been so, lots of going on. and there was no no um, bottom line tally given on what all that stuff was worth. Mm. You know, sure. so so I, I, it keeps it keeps me wondering or has me wondering what happened to those those riches and things that were found in those palaces, the gold. The, and, and the interesting thing was about that there was money found in there. American money, not Iraqi money, mm -hmm. but American money, which leads to two questions for me. What were they doing with so much American currency, and, and why was it there? You know, how did they get it, and why was it there? So this, 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 this is, is, is some questions that need to be answered. But I'm glad you said one other thing, too. And that was is that um, in, in the win of Obama, 
And I'm going to put it that way because you got 